Hello viewers, hope you're all doing good. Welcome to this video. My name is Nawaz and you're watching NXA, the Linux Guide channel. So in our previous video, we saw how to create an application, create an environment and manage it in the Elastic Beanstalk using the EBCLI command. In this video, we are going to create multiple environments for our web application. So that would be the normal use case. And I will show you how to integrate your EB environment with the Git source control by having multiple branches and multiple environments. So basically the idea is I will be creating two git branches. One will be our dev branch and another one will be our production branch. So in the development branch, we will create a dev environment and basically there we will develop, manipulate, deploy and test the code and verify if that's the exact thing that we want. And then if you are happy with that code, we will be pushing that code to our production branch and create a production environment there. So how to switch between the two environments and how to manage those two environments in Elastic Beanstalk using EBCLI. That's the idea behind this video. Let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to create a directory here and this will be my project directory. So mkdir EBCLI demo. Let's save it to that folder. And here let's create the HTML file. So if I cut that HTML file. So this is my application and the application version is 1.0. Let's initialize a git repository here. So git init. So it has initialized empty git repository. So if I do git status, so we have one on track file. So let's git add and git commit with the message. Let's say first commit. All right. So if I do git status again, so our working tree is clean and we are on our branch master. So the master branch will be our production branch. So I'm going to create another branch. So let's quickly see what branches we have. So git branch minus L. So we only have master branch. Let's create a dev branch. So git checkout, if I could type it. So git checkout minus B dev. So it has created a branch dev and it has uh, switched to that branch. If I do git status, so we are on our dev branch. So let's create a dev environment here. We have the HTML file. So eBay in it will create the application. Select the default region. Mine is US East 1. So 1, enter. Enter application name, default is EBCLI demo. I'm fine with that. The peers you are using PHP, is this correct? Yes. Default is PHP 7.4. That's fine. Do you wish to continue with code commit? No, the default is no, so enter. Do you want to set up SSH for your instances? No, I don't want that. Okay, so we have created the application. Let's verify it by the GUI as well. So applications, so we have one application and there is no environment for that application. So let's create the environment. Um, EB creates, will create the environment and let's name the environment as EBCLI demo dev. And also I want to show you one more thing. So I will open another tab and if I do git log, so this is our commit hash, which is for this commit, which was our first commit. So the commit hash is 97A0. So if I could um, switch between those terminals. So control shift left arrow. Okay. It's not working. Okay. So it has created the application with the app version 97A0, which is similar to our commit hash. So that's fine. Okay, it's control tab. That's nice. So it's going to create the application and the environment with this commit hash. So it's going to take some time. I'm going to pause this video and come back when this is ready. All right. So the environment is now ready. So it has used the commit ID, which was 97A0 as the running version. And it has created the load balancer, the easy to instance, the security groups and the scaling policies, the scaling group, the launch configuration, uh, CloudWatch alarm, one for scaling up and one for scaling down. 
So that's nice if I go to my environment and verify that. So we have one environment which is using this application which is EBCLI demo. So let's go into that application and in this environment and you will see the running version is 97A0 which is our commit ID. So by default it will take your commit ID as your default running version. Okay. Let's quickly verify which um, environment we are in. So EB list will list the environments. So we are on our dev environment and if I do git status and we are on our dev branch. Okay. So let's do EB open. Let's um, verify the application on the web browser. So EBCLI demo dev and the application version is 1.0. Okay, so I'm fine with this application. I love this application. Now I want to use this in my production as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my production branch. So to go there, git checkout master will do the trick. So now if I do git status. So now we are on our master branch and there is one and track file which is dot git ignore. And we can ignore this file. If I do eb creates and the name of the environment which is eb cli demo and let's say prod. So this will create a production environment for my same application. So let's do that. Enter. So it's going to use the same commit id which was um, I forgot it. So let's verify it here which is 97a0. It's going to use that. Here it is. So it will deploy and create all the underlying resources and the EC2 instances, the load balancer, the auto scaling group, cloud watch alarms and all those things. So it's going to take some time, maybe five to 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when this is ready. Okay. So now my environment is ready. I will clear the terminal and I will close this tab. So let's go to environments. And here you will see that now we have two environments, ebdemo dev and ebcli demo prod using the same application, which is ebcli demo. If I go to applications, so there is one application and it has two environments. So that's nice. Let's go to the prod environment. Okay. So it's using the same commit ID here. So every command which is available to your dev environment will be available here as well for your prod environment. So let's do EB list. So now we have two environments. One is dev and another one is prod. We can use all sort of command. EB logs will fetch the logs. EB health will show the health of this particular environment. And EB events and all those commands will be available here as well. Okay. So as you can see, the asterisk sign is here which indicates that we are in this environment. So let's do EV open and that's going to open my application in a web browser. So EV CLI demo prod and the application version is 1.0. So that's nice. So now what I'm going to do is let's do EV list first. So EB list. So let's say I want to go inside my dev environment. I want to make some changes there. So how can I switch the environment? So EB use is the command to switch the environment. So EB use and the name of the environment uh, will do the trick. But also you can change the environment using the git checkout command. So if you switch your branches, it will switch your environment as well. So EB use is the manual way of switching your environments. Uh, git checkout will do it automatically. So let's try it. So git checkout and the name of the branch was dev. So if I do EB list again, so now we are in our dev environment. So this is the asterisk symbol and we are in our dev environment. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the HTML file. Let's say, um, I want to remove this blank spaces and also the version number is now 2.0. Okay. 
So let's quickly git add and commit this. So git commit with a message. Let's say second commit. Nice. If I do git log, so now we have two commits. Uh, the second commit is this on the dev environment and my dev branch is a commit ahead of the master branch. So that's nice. So the commit ID is B757. Okay. So let's deploy this version of the application. To do that, I'm going to use the command eb deploy. Enter. Let's go to the environments. Let's go to dev environment. So it has updating the environment. So it has uploaded the code to S3 bucket. And in a short while, you will see that the environment will be updating. So it's not going to take much time because we are simply updating the environment. It won't create any new resources because it has already created the resources and the underlying infra. So it will take about maybe 30 seconds or one minute max to max. Okay, it's done here. So that has been updated successfully. If I do EV open now. So now the application version is version 2.0. That's nice. And here you will see the running version is B757. Okay, so that's nice. So I am happy with this new code of mine. So I want it in my production environment as well. So let's do that. So git checkout master. And here I want to, let's say, merge the dev branch with the master branch. So if I do git status first, so it says start elastic beanstalk, we can ignore this. So let's merge the dev branch. So git merge dev. So now we have merged the dev branch with the production branch. Now we can deploy the code. So the same command before that, let's verify the environment. So eb list. So we are in our prod environment and we are in our master branch as well, right? Okay, let's deploy the code. So eb deploy. And this will also update the environment. So let's go to environments and let's go to prod environment. As you can see, the commit ID is same B757. And this will be done in less than 30 seconds. Okay, it has started updating the environment. Let's give it a couple of more seconds. So the previous version was this. And now the newer version is this B757. Okay, so that's done. If I do EB open now. So we will see the new application version, which is version 2.0. As you can see, the new application version is NXA, the Linux guy version 2.0. So if I do a list, that's how you create multiple environments for your Elastic Beanstalk application. That's cool. Okay. Also, I want to show you how you can label your um, environment. So this right here, the running version B757, it's kind of, you know, um, it, we won't be able to track which uh, deployment we are in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a meaningful name. So that will be a good practice. That's always a good practice to give a meaningful name to your deployed version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag this with a git tag command. So git tag minus a, let's say version 2.0 is a tag and I'm going to commit it with a message. So second version of my app. Or what we can do is we're going to go to the dev environment. We're going to make some change there. Tag it. Let's do that that way. So if I do git checkout dev. So now we are in our dev environment. Let's verify that with eblist command. So let's edit the index.html file and I'm going to change the version to version 3.0. 3.0 is the version. Okay. Now if I do git status, so we have one untracked file or the modified file. So let's do git add and commit this with git commit. So git commit with a message. Let's say third commit. 
Okay, if I do get status again, so we are on the clean state. So let's deploy this code without any label or any version tag. So if I do eb deploy, it's gonna take the commit ID, which was this 83C9 by default. So it's gonna update the environment. So let's go to eb demo dev. And the environment update has been started here. So let's wait till it is completely finished. Then we will verify it by using the eb open command. Um, all right, so the environment update has been completed. Let's do eb open and verify our development environment. So the dev branch is running version 3.0. Okay, so let's go to our master branch and check what it's running. So git checkout master and eb open. Let's verify that. Before this, we have merged the branch. So that's why it was using version 2.0. Now we haven't done anything. So the version is 2.0 still. So let's do one thing. Let's merge the branch. So git merge dev. Okay. So let's deploy the code. Before that, let's give it a tag. If I do git tag minus L, I don't have any tag. So let's create a tag. So git tag. Let's say I want to add version 3.0 and commit it with a message. My third version of the EB app. Okay. If I do git tag minus L. So we have one tag, which is version 3.0. So let's deploy the app with this tag. So what I'm going to do is EB deploy. And if I do minus minus help, it will show me all the options and arguments available with this eb deploy command so here we have minus l to label the application so i'm going to use that so eb deploy minus l and the tag was version 3.0 right or i can also give um, eb cli demo version 3.0 it's up to you you can give here anything so it's going to use the tag version 3.0 enter So now it's creating the application with this version and the name of the application is this. So the environment update has been started. If I go to environments and if I go to prod environment, so the environment is updating. Let's wait a few more seconds. All right. So the environment is now ready. And here you will see that the running version is EV CLI demo version 3.0. So that's how you label your applications. So it's always a good practice to label your application because it will be very helpful in uh, tracking your deployments. If I do EV list again. Okay. So these are the environments. So that's how you create multiple environments for your single application. All right. So I have covered everything, I guess. And one more option you can say is EB app version. This is the command. If I type minus minus help, so we can pass arguments. One of it is lifecycle. So I don't want to modify anything here. So let's do EB app version. And it will show me the different deployed version of the app. So first we have deployed this on the dev environment and on that prod environment. And after that, second commit on the dev and prod. And third commit on the dev. And after that, we label the application on the prod environment with this label, right? Q to quit out of it. Okay. So I guess I have covered everything here. So let's terminate the application. To do that, we can type ev terminate command. And this will ask me for the environment. The name of the environment is this. So the one way is you can type the name of the environment here, press enter, and it will terminate the environment. But let's say you don't want to type the name of the environment. So what you can do is eb terminate um, minus minus force. And this will terminate the environment we are currently in. So let's say you want to terminate all of the environment. So we have two environments. 
one is dev and another one is prod. So if you want to terminate all of these environments, we can use the command eb terminate minus minus all and minus minus force. And this command will terminate all the environments and it won't ask for any prompt or the name of the environment. So let's do that. Enter. So it's always a good practice to remove or clean up all of your resources in AWS because it will charge you extra cost. Um, if you are using the free tier, it will eat up all of your resources or your free tier limit. So it's always a good practice to remove everything once you have done. Okay. So it won't remove the data which was inside the S3 bucket. We have to do it manually because it has applied an associated policy with it. So let's do that until it's terminating the environment. So let's go to S3. I will maximize this screen so it's easy for you guys to see. Okay, so this is my bucket. And here we have one policy to prevent it from accidental deletion. So if I go to permissions and here on bucket policy. So this is the policy and the effect is deny for delete bucket. So let's delete this policy. And now go to S3 bucket. Select the bucket. Um, delete. Copy the name of the bucket from here. Control C, Control V, confirm. So the S3 bucket is now gone. Let's move it on the side. So the environment is still terminating. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when the environment has successfully terminated. Okay, so that's it for this video guys. I hope I have covered everything regarding this topic on managing multiple EB environments using Git. If you guys have any query or any suggestions, so you can always leave a comment in the comment section and I will get back to you guys as quickly as possible. So I hope you guys find this video useful. If you did, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends and see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye bye.